I think that folks are often in the position of literally running all around the city to get their different needs met and they're waiting in line at the welfare office and they're somewhere else trying to access housing and then they're running to a specialist and then they're you know, going to their primary care physician and being able to offer that all in one place has an obvious convenience, but it also means that you have a medical team that can be working with the social service team that can be working with you know, folks doing drop-in programming so that there's really like a coordination and a collaboration and people feel like they kind of have a whole like place and community that's behind them, that cares about them and that wants to show up for them. The impact that we are having is creating a space where people can come in, feel that they are respected and feel comfortable with getting medical care as part of their overall life plan. We see that by having people come in who have had not favorable experiences with the medical system before and coming in and saying, yes, I will come back here. Um, I do feel comfortable here. My doctor, his name Dr. Yates, and he, he be on top of everything when it comes down to it. He makes sure that I'm not doing nothing that I'm not su supposed to be doing. And he just wanna see me improve a as a person instead of seeing me always being down and out. If I felt as if he didn't care, I wouldn't come here at all. I, w I would take take my business el elsewhere, but I feel comfortable coming here, talking to, to my doctor about any, any issue I got going on. Our level of care that we provide depends on the medical issue that we are presented with. We can certainly do primary care. We can do some degree of specialty care. We have a particular interest, but not focus on caring for people with chronic viral infections, HIV and hepatitis B and C. We have mental health screening and referrals. We have an on-site nutritionist and we do walk-in appointments and same-day scheduling. I think one of our major goals is not just to have that first visit, but to really develop a long-standing relationship with people. The process of staying healthy is a lifetime, lifetime excursion and you have to, you have to work at that on both ends. The intake process is fairly uh, easy. They come in, they fill out demographics, insurance information. It takes no more than about 10 to 15 minutes. Though we are open to all, we do target those who are challenged by socioeconomic barriers. All patients are offered the opportunity to sit with a benefits uh, counselor. That benefits counselor helps them um, with public services such as insurance through Medicaid or Medicare. We accept all insurances. We operate on a sliding fee scale, which focuses on their household size and income. The John Bell Health Center currently sees um, anyone regardless of their status. However, we do have a program that links to those targeting individuals with a history of incarceration. We have a linkage program with the prison system in order to have folks refer to us. We have educational programs and within our reentry center, which is really a drop-in center, open about 16 hours a week. Kind of the whole gamut of what folks need in terms of skills development and access to resources. I started to know the change after a year went past. You know, uh, my speech, talking to others, um, how I cope with my anger, you know, how to walk away with, you know, with certain things, you know, how to talk to people. So I was like, okay, this is a totally different person right now. You know, and I'm like, is this really me doing this? The reason that we have such a comprehensive suite of programs and services is to kind of meet the broad needs of the folks that we serve to allow them to build the skills, access the information that they need in order to successfully reintegrate, in order to be able to sort of live their best lives in the community. Oh man, if ICJ wasn't here, you know, I'd probably be, be honest with you, I'd probably be back in jail probably, you know, and the reason why, because I wouldn't know how to cope. I wouldn't know how to cope in society, you know, I'd probably come out here, probably try to sell drugs or probably rob somebody. To have an impact on my family, where it was that I talked to my daughter and uh, she's like, Dad, you sound different. I'm like, yes, she's like, you know, this is the longest time I've ever heard your voice and you still out? I'm saying, yeah, I'm still out and I'm planning on staying out.